We're here to help you progress your kite surfing, and today we're going to talk about the basics of how to wave ride. I'm Evan Netch. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to talk about wave riding strapless on a surfboard and just the basic principles of, of how to get in your first waves and what and what you want to do, how you want to fly the kite, and what and what you should be looking for um, in in your first wave riding sessions. Before we get into the waves, know know your riding level and and make sure you've progressed to the point where you're ready to get into the waves. So I would say that means mastering your your jibes, maybe starting to learn on your tacks. Uh, maybe even some small strapless airs. So check out the video right here to get yourself started, especially with your jibes, as that is the foundation for wave riding. Um, your jibes, your your jibes is is our linking turns, and that's what you're going to be doing on a wave. Is you're essentially going to be linking a series of jibes on a wave, at least in side shore wind, as you as you go down the line on the waves. So let's talk about the basics of wave riding. First off. There's tons of different wave riding. It's, it's very hard to say, this is, how, this is how you do it. First off, you're gonna have a variety of wind conditions. Onshore wind, side shore wind, offshore wind, and, and all those different wind conditions is gonna really change both the wave itself, the surface conditions, but most importantly, it's gonna change how you fly the kite, how you actually ride the wave. And secondly, um, you have front side waves versus back side waves. So is your face towards the wave or is your back towards the wave? And whether you're facing the wave front side or your back side, this is also going to you know, impact how you, know, how you fly the kite and, and really your ability to fly it. So what I want to do today is just start on with some of the very basic overview principles of how to select a wave, some, some right of way, and, and, and regardless of the wind condition, kind of what you want to do on the wave and, and how you control that kite. So first off, getting, getting into the waves, I want to talk about um, um, right of way. This is the most important thing because when you're in the waves first off and you're not wave riding and there's other people riding waves, you know, so, some of the rules are a little bit different than, than when you're just riding, riding in flat water. First and foremost is, is you want to just really keep an eye on other people around you and the person on the wave always has the right of way. So if you're going out and someone's on the wave, you should really give them the right of way unless you're pinched in some sort of position where there's rocks on the shoreline and you simply cannot turn around. They need to be understanding of that. But the person on the wave generally always has the right of way. So if you're going out, that means you need to either stop, wait for them to pass, you need to go upwind of them, or you need to really go so far downwind that they have all the space around they need to fly their kite and not, and not be impacted by yourself. Second off, Choosing the wave, standard surf etiquette is that the person that is at the peak of the wave has priority on the wave. And being at the peak of the wave basically means you have the most potential to get the longest ride out of the wave, and that's why the person has priority. If someone was to take off not at the peak while someone else is at the peak, the person at the peak has more time on the wave, therefore they're going to make the most of it, therefore they, they have that wave. That wave is considered to be their wave. In, in kiting, it is the same principle, but just, just slightly different. What you don't want to do is, is short tack somebody. So whoever, you know, generally speaking, unless somebody is so ridiculously far down the wave, they're on a completely different part of it and you're not going to impact each other, whoever's on the wave first has the right of way. So if someone is following a swell from the outside, riding all the way in, that, you know, that is the wave they've selected, that's the wave they're going to ride. So if you're coming out and you're just a few feet upwind of them, don't turn around and take that wave from them. That, that is their wave, and that's considered extremely, extremely bad wave riding manners. At the same time, if you are that person who's riding a wave and you're claiming that swell all the way in, don't at last minute say, eh, that one doesn't look so good, I'm going to let that pass, and I'm going to pick up the one behind it. You've, you've kind of committed to taking that wave if there's other people in the area and someone else might be on that wave behind you, so don't drop off one to pick up another. It, it does take a lot of skill and a degree of luck to make sure you've, you've selected and you're on a better wave. And of course, some sessions you're going to get those best waves and others you aren't. And there's always, you know, there's, it's, waves aren't infinite and that's why I think it is pretty competitive, at least in the surfing world, for, for good waves. Waves come in sets of maybe one to five waves 
and, um, and often there can be long waits in between sets, so a lot of people can be impatient waiting, waiting for those waves, and there may, may not be a lot of them, but respect others and, and, know, and know the priorities. Lastly, or, or, or finally, when we're on, when they're on the wave, how, how are we gonna ride the wave? What are we gonna do with the kite? And I would say the idea is, regardless of the wind direction, you always wanna keep some line tension in the kite. So in offshore wind, this is a lot easier to do. You know, the wind's going up the face of the wave and you're not going straight downwind at the kite, you're going more across the wind. So you can do some really small movements with the kite, keep that line tension, and do your turns top to bottom, whether you're front side or back side. Now, as that wind goes from a so-called offshore or side offshore to a more side shore wind, you're now riding more and more downwind. You're going more at your kite, which means you need to fly that kite more aggressively. So with every bottom turn, you really need to turn that kite and initiate more of a jibe as you do that bottom turn, and then turn that kite again as you do the top turn. So as that wind switches from offshore to more side shore, yes, this is normally a safer riding um, condition because you're not gonna get blown offshore. The wind is cleaner. It's not coming across the land. Um, but it's actually can be harder to ride the wave because you need to give more kite input. Input. You need to steer the kite more as you ride downwind at the wave, on the wave. Now, as the wind turns more and more onshore, now all of a sudden we're going from side shore to side onshore. And generally speaking, as that wind goes more and more onshore, the wave riding conditions are considered to be just a little bit poorer. And as that wind goes onshore, you really need to get even more aggressive with your kite because as you're riding that wave, you're now going even more downwind because that wave's taking you downwind and it's also taking you in a bit as it breaks closer to the beach, straight downwind. So this is especially where a wave specific kite really helps a lot. Kite like the drifter, a kite that sits deeper in the wind window, it turns very quickly and it keeps consistent line pressure. And this allows you to always keep that kite right there in the power zone and have the best control possible. So as that wind comes more and more onshore, you need to get more aggressive with, with your kite flying. And sometimes this means incorporating loops in order to really bring that kite deep in the wind window to keep it in that power zone when you're riding straight, when you're riding straight at it. Now, as the wind keeps shifting and it comes more and more onshore, now sometimes you're at the point where it doesn't matter which direction you ride. You can ride upwind or you can ride downwind on the kite. And this is kind of where I enjoy doing a lot of actually doing airs on the wave. When the wind becomes this onshore, now you can actually almost ride into the wind on the wave and edge up the face of the wave into the wind to do either a front side or a back side air. So for me, that straight onshore wind can actually be really fun for that reason. But sometimes you get this side onshore wind that's so onshore that it really takes a lot of kite flying to go down the, down the line on the wave, but it's not onshore enough where you can go upwind on the wave to do more airs and other riding. So you really need to look at the wind condition to, to decide, you know, and that's gonna really dictate um, you know, how you're flying the kite on the wave and, and what those conditions have, have to offer. So that would, that would be the basic, the basic principles of wave riding. Obviously, you're gonna have to take that and apply it to your, to your, local, to your local area. You know, sometimes a reef will you know, have the wave bending a little bit different relative to the shoreline or relative to the wave, but generally speaking, you want to always you know, keep that kite deep in the wind window, kind of have that kite lined up with the wave. In an offshore wind, the kite will just follow the wave. In, in a side shore wind, it's gonna take a lot more work to keep that kite going with the direction of the wave, with the direction that you're traveling. Um, that is the basics on how to ride a wave. Um, of, of course, front side versus back side is just, you know, it's a whole new, a whole new beast in, in how you're flying and how you're steering the kite. Um, but, you know, once, you know, once you get in the waves and, and you start progressing those sessions, going into bigger waves and, and, and in a different of, of wind directions relative to, to the wave, you're gonna really, you know, be able to kind of learn what works for you, what techniques works for you and, and what you like doing. And, and for me, riding in the waves, every session is different and that's what keeps pulling me back. You know, the wave size changes, the wind speed changes, the wind angle changes. So new, no two sessions are alike. And for me, that's why wave kiting is some of the most dynamic kiteboarding there is out there. So I hope this video is helpful. Please comment below. We'd love to hear what you'd have to say, what you want us to speak about, and what you'd love to learn about. Um, so please leave those comments in the, you know, leave those comments below. And um, thanks again for watching, and hope to uh, hope to see you back here soon.